Good evening, everyone. Um, we'll just wait for a while and wait for other, uh, other um, guests to join me. Okay, just a few seconds more. All right, welcome everyone. My name is Sharon, the trainee counselor from SGU. Tonight, I'll be sharing breakup first aid, what to expect and what to do. All right, so buckle up and let's go. Does this sound like you? Let's do a checking first before we begin further, okay? All right. Since your breakup, you can barely make it through the day without crying, okay? Your normal day of your normal day activities are affected. You barely make it through the day without crying. You have no idea what to do to help you feel better. You feel hopeless that you'll ever be able to feel happy again or you're too overwhelmed by the emotions that is hard to navigate, all right? If, you if your answer yes to these questions, then please stay with me for the next half an hour, yeah? If, even though you, your answer is no, but do stay with me also, let's get equipped and uh, so that we have the knowledge to support and to help our loved ones, our families and our friends in time of need, okay? Okay, basically, what is the roles in the breakup relationships? There are two roles in a breakup relationship, which is a breakup year and a breakup year. Let's take a deeper look on this, okay? The, the, uh, like what I said just now, there are two roles in the breakup relationships, the breakup year or the breakup year. Whether you are the breakup year or the breakup year obviously makes a difference, okay? Breakup year is the person who initiated the breakup. He and she not only are more in control, they have likely already worked through the emotion pro and cons to reach this point. Meaning that if you are a breakup, you, you already thought, you know, all the pro and cons, whether or not to end the relationship, and you the control is in you. You are the one who initiated the whole breakup. So if you are a breakup, yeah, that is your role, all right? Next is the breakup E. Breakup E is a recipient of the news. The person reaction likely depends on whether you two realized and had the same feelings or you were caught completely off guard. Okay, so breakup day meaning that you are the one that being told that, hey, look here, uh, I would like to break up, you see, and you have less control in these uh, situations. And most of the time, the breakup day are caught uh, out of sudden. You see, oh, unless you are more prepared, unless you have the same feeling that, you know, oh, this relationship, I think it's not working. So I have the same feeling also, but let's try, let's give it a try like that. And you're delaying. Unless you have that feeling, then you will be, then you will feel less uh, uh, caught out of the blue. Line, okay. So, but tonight I will be focused on the left knee. Okay. I will focus on the breakup knee more. All right. So let's see. Um, there are stages of grief actually for a breakup too. Okay, basically it comes with uh, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. Uh, it doesn't go one after one, you see the stages. It doesn't mean that after it, it must start from denial, then you go to anger, then you go to bargaining, then you go to depression, then you go to acceptance. It can go back and forth. Uh, you can start with denial, and then you go for bargaining, then after that you think that no, I'm still feeling ang uh, I'm angry, you know, uh, that, you know, uh, they, the person caused me pain. Then you fall back to anger. So uh, basically the stages of grief is uh, very personal. It's not uh, according to stages like denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. It can go back and forth, okay? So let's take a deeper look on denial, all right? And uh, breaking uh, stages of grief... It also, um, it also break, breaking up is not easy, la, basically. Huh? It takes time for wounds to heal, okay? And there are five stages of grief that you will go through normally. And like I said just now, they are denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance, okay? These are the natural ways for your heart to heal. Therefore, if you're in a breakup situation now, Please bear with me. Let's go through and let's journey this together. Okay, let's take a deeper look on denial. Basically, uh, denial is your brain automatic response to unwanted news. It's also a type of coping mechanism because denial gives your heart time to adjust to the new situation. 
in the denial phase, you may think that your boyfriend or girlfriend is coming back to you. Everybody spends different amounts of time in the denial phase. Therefore, it's wise to turn to your friend for, uh, for family support or for your friend for support or your family for support. Okay, so uh, anger. Next, we will go to anger. All right, a breakup can even uh, make the most rational person do irrational things. What do, I, what, what, what do I mean by that? Let's take a look. It's normal to be angry at your ex. Okay, you may resent he or she for causing you pain. It's important in this phase not to make any rash decisions that you may later regret. Wait until you are less emotional. Allow yourself to work through your anger, perhaps by exercising or drawing. Expressing your feelings in a journal is a way to release your emotions. You, you, you will feel anger that, you know, you are the one who caused me pain. You are the one who betrayed me. So most of the time, uh, you have the tendency that, you know, you will take a very rash, you will make a very rash decisions. Okay, for students, uh, those rash decisions are, you know, something like dropping your studies, you change uni or university, or you write a long rest on Facebook about your ex shortcomings. See, these are all the unhealthy coping, right? So instead of that, what you can do is to allow yourself to work through your anger, perhaps by exercising or drawing, or writing out a journal or writing a letter to lash out your emotion. That is more. Uh, that is a more healthier way. Okay. So. so uh, uh, one of the best ways to avoid embarrassing is Okay, it's back. I'm so sorry the line is unstable but please bear with me yeah okay acting in the heat of the moment is a recipe for regret this is what you know therefore self now to work through anger you are in the stage of anger all right next we will go to bargaining in the bargaining phase you will try to restore your friendship or perhaps rebuild it as a friendship Trying to befriend an ex, especially soon, soon after the breakup, will only keep the pain of heartbreak fresh. You can salvage your pride by starting anew without your ex. What does this mean? This meaning that in the bargaining stage, you will come down, you know, you will, you will kind of stood down and say, okay, um, all right, we, we, we don't be boyfriend and girlfriend, but at least we can be friend, you see, just be friend. But in this way, you're actually delaying your healing process, okay? And um, later, this one we will talk uh, in, later in a more detailed phase, uh, okay? But what you can do is you can salvage your pride by starting a new without a new without your ex. Instead of bargaining like, you know, please let us be friends. It will be better for you to end the relationship if, you know, it's really uh, come to the situations that, you know, uh, no hope to salvage it. The best thing is to salvage yourself with a brand new you. Okay, carry out yourself, put yourself all together up again. Later, we will come to uh, we'll come to uh, a, a deeper sharing on that, how to put yourself all together, okay? So depression, the last stage, well, uh, no, the second last stage is come to depressions. It's normal to be sad, all right? At this point in your grieving, you come to terms with the fact that the situation is not going to change. This is a time for reflection. You may want to be alone. Realize the kindness of others is not intended to upset you. Instead, rely your support, rely on your support system to keep you distracted from your grief. Okay. Um, after a breakup, it's normal to be sad. Okay. At this point, you will come to a terms that nothing you can do. All right. And you will try, it's a time to do your reflections. Okay. You may want to be alone. Alone, you may want to be, you may isolate yourself, you may withdraw yourself, don't want to see anybody, 
uh, not doing your routine anymore. You lost your motivation. You lost your interest. But uh, this is the important time that you go ask for help and go and see who can be your side. Share about it and uh, and find your support system. Who is your buffer so that you can distract it from your grief so much? Okay. And uh, the most important thing is uh, resist the temptation to turn to drugs, alcohol, or food. Usually when you, you're down with depression, right, some people cope it with drugs and somebody do it with excessive uh, eating and uh, or alcohol. So all these are not a healthy uh, coping mechanism to cope with the grief, right? Those habits can be destructive, all right? So rather eat well, sleep well and exercise okay now we come to acceptance okay it is natural to harbor a place in your heart for your loved ones special relationship make you who you are however in the final stage of grief after a breakup you will begin to piece together what happened and you accept the breakup Using this as an opportunity to learn from mistakes from the past and carry those lessons into the future. Okay, This is the healthiest way to fully accept a breakup and growth as an individual. The pain may not be gone completely yet, but time will heal those wounds. Okay? So what you need to do is, you know, at this time, you accept it. Yes, this is a fact that nothing can be changed. But what can you do? You have paid such a high price, you know, you are sad or perhaps maybe some, you, you, uh, your ex is ghosting you or betrayer, something like that. So nothing can be done. So this is the time that you learned. You use this opportunity to learn. What have you learned from this, um, this lesson so that you learn the good one, you know, that you can carry and you bet and you can you can build your relationship better with your next, your bigger future boyfriend or girlfriend, and you learn that okay, if this uh, in this relationship I'm too demanding or I'm too powering or I'm too obsessive. So this is a lesson you learn that you know, or for my next relationship, I should be, I should not be doing this, you know, I should be more understanding or I should be more give in and thoughtful and considerate. So these are things like that. Uh, during your acceptance stage, these are something that you can reflect. What is good? What have you done good enough or what you have not done good enough? Uh, so that you, you, will be, you will be smarter or you will be more uh, intelligent uh, in dealing with your next relationship. Okay? Okay, what to expect? What are the normal reactions? So the normal reactions are feeling numb, feeling overwhelmed, obsessing, and stirring of other losses. What does this mean by feeling numb or feeling overwhelmed? Okay, feeling numb and feeling overwhelmed is during a shell shock stage. Your emotions are all over the place. You walk around in a fog or suddenly find yourself in a fit of sadness or anger, or you feel relief, but maybe also give over feeling relief, and you can't focus much of anything. This is what it means by feeling numb and feeling overwhelmed. Okay, you are either feel yourself uh, in, the, in the sadness or in the anger, or maybe you feel that, you know, that relationship is, is not working and um, she's not the right person, for whatever reason, and you wanted to end the relationship. So in this case, you are the breakup here. So you may feel grief also, and yet you feel relief, you see, to terminate, uh, to end the relationship. Um, so in this stage, usually when you have this reaction, usually you can't focus much of the thing. All right, then let's go to obsessing. In obsessing, you likely can't focus because you are also likely constantly obsessing. You feel like you have no control over your mind. It is always running, replaying events from the past, triple analyzing text messages, and last conversation over and over. Does this sound familiar to you? If you are in the stage of breakup, I think this is normal we do. 
and this is a normal reaction, you know, um, a lot of flashback, a lot of sweet memories will just pop up, you know, keep on running, his, his, his smile, uh, his romantic actions will keep replaying in your mind and you will triple analyzing the text messages and see, oh, what he writes, what does he mean? And the, and you will start at the last conversation over and over. This is what it meant by obsessing, okay? What your mind is doing is struggling to create a story to connect the dots between all those memory and positive feelings of before with the current reality of after. So you're trying to, what are you, you you're playing this and you're looking at the conversation, especially basically you're trying to create a story with, Okay, to connect the dots of what he why the moment he say uh, to break up and the current and the from and the previous sweet romantics. Okay, you are forced to look at your relationship through a new lens. All those positive memories are corrupted, and your brain is trying to create a coherent story so that the now the breakup matches the past. Okay, and last we go to a stirring of other losses. You find yourself thinking spontaneously about past losses, other breakups. Okay. You will, you will, you you will, you will try to link all those things that you fail to do, and you make yourself as a failure. You know, I I, I am not lovable. Nobody like me. I fail to this. I fail that. And you link all those together. You will stir up all the other losses together to make you to enhance your feeling that, you know, you are a failure. So this is all the normal reactions that a person in a breakup will have, right? So I hope I'm not going too far, but if I'm going too fast, then you can always look back the playback, okay? Now we come to don'ts uh, during a breakup, okay? Basically, don't step into a new relationship so quickly and don't make big decisions, okay? Don't step into a new relationship so quickly. Yes, I know you need to get out. Maybe you want to step back into dating as soon as possible, you know, to deal with your pain, but be careful about falling into a serious relationship. For the next several months, at least you are not likely to be able to really see a whole new someone. Everyone is an unversion of your ex, therefore, do not <laughs> jump into a new relationship so quickly, okay? Because at these early stages of grief, your relationship lens is distorted, okay? You are mentally comparing and contrasting everyone to your ex, honing in or honing on the one or two things that you hated or missed. Therefore, don't rush into a new relationship. Just because your breakup left you feeling lonely or simply to prove that your ex that just or simply to prove to your ex that you know you have somebody now. If you don't want me, it's okay. You tell me it's okay. I have somebody so fast, so 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 fast. You see, so there is a a way that you're taking revenge, or simply to avoid grieving your pain. These are not a wise decisions, and this is not a wise actions. You know, to to deal with your grief or to handle the breakup. All right. Let us don't make big decisions. Okay, stressful times are worst time to make big decisions. Your life and view of reality will change in few weeks of months. So don't make anything big decisions. You should take a deep breath, give your most rational self time to get back online. All right? Like uh, if, for example, okay, you, uh, you and your your ex or you and your boyfriend is from a, is a classmate is a classmate or from the same club, you know, uh, in order to avoid him or, or or her, then you will just withdraw yourself from the club or you will just uh, uh, drop your studies or you change another uni or this like just now earlier we mentioned, these are all a rash decisions. Now. Okay, give yourself some time, deal with it, you know, and slowly and slowly until... Uh, the stage of acceptance, then you'll feel better. Mm -hmm. Okay, now that uh, we finished the two don'ts and we shall journey in much in the do's. Okay, um, there are a few do's that we can do during breakup. 
you know, usually when we break up already, we think that nothing we can do. We are stuck there, you see. We can't navigate. We only cry. We feel that the whole world is collapsed. We don't know what to do. We cannot move forward. Actually, there is few things that we can do. All right? So let's see and let's learn together what are the things that we can do during a breakup. First is to do process the situation. What does process the situations mean? Okay? Being able to process the situation is the first step to ensure that you will be able to sort out and not be overwhelmed by your emotions and not fall into the early stage of grief and denial. Okay, especially in the situation that you are caught out of the blue, you know, suddenly mm, your boyfriend or girlfriend uh, went ghosting, not answering your text, not seeing you, or throw you a sudden news that, you know, they want to break off, and you're still in the state shop, you know, floating around, you're still caught in your shop, you're still in your shell shop stage, and it's best, you know, if nothing can be done already, so it's best to process the situation. What you can do is to, you know, process the situation, meaning to ground down yourself and help you to see uh, where do you stand now and what is the situation you are in now, okay? So what you can do is you can fill in the following information in a piece of paper. Get a paper, get a pencil, and then you start writing the name of the person who broke your heart, okay? And then you can write a short description of who they are and then what they did to break your heart, okay? 10 statements of the way you feel about it. You know, he has broken your heart, and how do you feel about it? Try to write 10 statements or more if you have, okay? And then five reasons why they should no longer be in your life, okay? And then do you, do you want to be distracted from it or to talk about it? By doing this, by process the situation, it actually ground you now, ground you, ground you down to see the situations, to avoid, you know, you falls in the stage of denial. Okay, that oh no la, nothing. He still loves me, even though the relationship has ended. He still loves me. I still want to find him. I still want to, you know, uh, I I can't accept the fact that you are locked and you are stuck in the situations for long. So in order to help you to pass through the stage of grief and to pass through the stage of denial, I think this is a very good practice, okay? You can screenshot this if you want, you know, if you still don't know what is happening, you're still in your shock, I think this is a very good practice for you to have a, a clear look of your situation or why is he breaking your heart and the why the 10 reasons that, you know, or five reasons that he should you should you should move on and he should no longer be in your life and just give a thought that do you want to be distracted from it that means you don't want to think about it or you want to talk about it okay this is a uh, exercise that helped you huh to 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 not fall into an early stage of grief or denial okay next we will have uh next we will have go cold turkey we will have uh, let go, you will have get support to express your emotions. These are, these are all the tools that you can do. Okay, go cold turkey. Right? Go cold turkey means let's go out of the way. Do not have any contact with your ex. Okay, we, we usually see that many ex, they can be friends together after a breakup. Yes, it can. Some can, but just not right away, I guess, okay? Because you need some time and space to let go. The most important developmental task you must accomplish after a breakup is letting go, okay? Meeting your ex for lunch is going to mess, mess with the process. Metaphorically, your breakup made you bleed, okay? You need a scrap to form so that you can heal. But every time you have contact or your email or your text messages or your FaceTime or a phone call or seeing him in person or getting a message from a carrier pigeon, it tears off the scrap and you bleed again, you see. This slows down your healing process. Do you agree with me? Yeah. So because this is what we call a soft breakup, the relationship is actually ended, okay? But 
by acting this way, uh, like your email, your text message, your FaceTime phone call, you seeing him in person, you, you, you actually acted like the relationship has not ended like that. So it will be half hanging, you see. Yeah, so it do no good. And it slow down the, your healing process. You might have a false hope, you know, you might go back to the bargaining stage again. Okay, so um, let's get, let's go cold turkey, you know, stop texting and stop contact your ex, okay? And do let go. Stop checking your ex social media and looking at old photos on your camera roll. And put away the framed ones in your house or in your hostel to give yourself some mental space to process your feelings and avoid any emotion triggers. Okay, you can hide. How to do this? That means uh, you can hide or you can unfollow your ex accounts. Hiding their social media presence from your phone allows you to set firm boundaries and not accidentally see anything that will set you back emotionally. Okay, don't ask your mutual friends how he or she is doing. And if they are offering it up without you asking, tell them not to. Because this will, mm, this will easily, you know, trigger you, <laughs> and it might make you, uh, it might, it might make you back to emotionally. You have come this far, you know, to stand up again. But sometimes all this news that you hear or you listen about uh, on uh, that you receive about him on her will actually set you fall back again. Therefore, uh, if you can. You can tell your friend, your mutual friend, don't share about him or her to you, okay? Next is to get support and express your emotions, okay? Let those close to you know what is going on and find those you can lean on. It's okay to talk about how you are feeling. This is part of the process of unraveling of your pain, okay? If you find they are giving you too much advice, help them out, let them know that you just need to talk and they don't need to fix anything. That you are getting that grief out, draining the wound. By retelling the story changes and you begin to connect the dots. What does it mean by this? This is if, you know, sometimes we have our friends that love us so much they will tend to give us a lot of advice, you know, do this, do that, uh, or talk back about him to make you feel good. But if you feel this is too overwhelming, you can actually tell your friend, okay, look here, I can fix myself. So uh, I just need a uh, hearing ears for me to latch or to vent about my feelings. So uh, I think they will understand. So they will spare you their listening ears rather than, you know, instead of give you a lot of advices. If that kind of uh, support that you're looking for, you can actually talk to your friend, be friend to them. You see, okay, I thank you for your care and concern, but what I need is just a pair of ears to listen to my feelings, okay? So by telling the story changes and you begin to connect the dots, meaning that uh, if you again and again and sharing the same thing, uh, it, will, it will bring it to reality easier. Okay, it will make you rationalize the situation better. Okay, and if you don't have, just in case, uh, if you don't have others, okay, you can write a journal to put your emotion into words. You know, you can write to get all those jumble thoughts out of your head. Just in case you are someone who is introvert or some relationship that you wouldn't want people to know or whatever reason that you don't want people to know, don't feel alone. And don't 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 bottle up all your emotions. Another way you can do is like what I said just now. You can write a journal, okay, to put your emotions into words, and you can write uh, to get out all your jumper thoughts. Uh, and and you can after you write it, you can actually burn it, or you can actually throw it, or you can actually read again and again. You see and uh, rationalize your thought and see deal with your feeling and your grief and your pain, okay. So next, we will look at some and uh, some other do's, which is keep routines, fill up the hole, and set a grieving day. Okay, what's it mean by keep up routines? Routines and structure keep you upright. So do your laundry, 
cook for yourself a meal, keep up your exercise, keep in touch with friends, even you feel that you don't have much to offer. See, usually uh, it's a normal reaction that during breakup, you will, you will withdraw yourself, you feel down, you, you know, you don't feel like doing anything, you don't feel like meeting your friends. Of course, you can allow yourself to grieve, but I think you should set an end date. Usually, I will, I will suggest to my client to set an end date to it, you see. You can't allow yourself and pamper yourself, continue to be in the grieving stage and in, in, a, in a sad mood, blue mood for, for a long time, okay? Of course, uh, how long you get through the pain is very individual, but uh, to your own comfort level, you can set an end date. Okay, for example, maybe a month, you can allow yourself to be sad, feeling down, feeling hurt or whatever, but you set the date for yourself that, you know, uh, on the 2nd of, uh, on the, now is, now is January, you can put that on the 6th of February, or on the 1st of February, I should get up, enough is enough, you know, you can get, a, set an end date for it and get it and get up again. And or you can meanwhile you can keep up your routines. Don't you though you don't feel like doing it, but you have to force yourself to do it. So to keep your routines upright, get yourself back to track again. You know, pick up all the hobbies again, those things that you you have uh, left up so much. You know, and uh, uh, maybe um, you can uh, change a new look. You know, change a new look, and um, yeah, just keep the routines up. Okay, just keep going, keep active and feel positive rather than, you know, sitting down and uh, locking yourself in the room with tears. Okay, this will be more benefit to you if you can keep up your routines, all right? Next is to fill up the hole. After the breakup, you have more time on your hands, isn't it? Okay, all the time you used to spend texting and hanging out, you now have to wallow in pain and self-pity for being heartbroken. You felt an emptiness in your life and no idea how to fill it up. Is that how you feel? Is that how you feel now? Okay. Let me repeat that. Huh? After the breakup, you have more time on your hands. All the time you used to spend texting and hanging out, you now have to wallow in pain and self-pity for being heartbroken. You felt an emptiness in your life and no idea how to fill it up. I think this is very common, right? Yeah, like, you know, uh, we feel so empty, like there's a hole in our heart, it's so painful and so hurtful, okay? So to be, avoid being in this situation, you can make a list of things you would like to do if you have time. In the order of preference, by doing this, you no longer have to think about what you would like to do to fill up your time. You only have to follow the pre-existing list, okay? This, what I'm trying to say here is, you know, when you're in relationship, your time is occupied with he or she. But now that the relationship has ended, so you will so-called like in the quote and unquote extra time, you see, and you feel so empty, you feel so lonely, you don't know what to do. So what you can do is do up your a list, okay? Get a paper, write down the list in your preference. Like for example, uh, uh, you, you you like to learn piano for so long or you like to learn violin for so long but you don't have time, you see, or you you want to learn uh, cross-stitching or you want to learn baseball or scratch or whatever. So something that, you know, or swimming perhaps or take up a, a, a music lesson or whatever. So for those things that, for those days you don't have time to do, now you can list it down, okay, according to your preference. So, how then you can use this list to fill up your time, all right? So then you don't have to think much like, you know, I don't have, not, I have nothing to do. I don't know how to live. I, I, I don't know what to do. So do according to your list to fill up your time and slowly fill up the hole, okay? So this is what we're saying that uh, that's something that you can do to fill up the hole, up, okay? And next is to set a grieving day, okay? Instead of grieving of your loss every day, you set a day in the week as a grieving day where you can delay your grief to that certain day. This is a very good practice and uh, basically I find it very helpful for my clients, uh, those who face, uh, uh, those who uh, are grieving for their loss, okay? Um, usually 
um, out of sadness, they will cry every day, they will miss the person every day, and to some extent, it affected their daily life and their daily routine and their emotion as well. So what I suggest to my client is set a grieving day. For example, instead of you crying every day, right? So you said today is Friday. So you said it, um, my grieving day is on Friday, okay? So whenever you thought of it and whenever you feel sad, you have to tell yourself that no, uh, today is not my grieving day. My grieving day is next Friday. Let's say today Friday over, la. okay? So you have to delay it, like if, if, like for example, tomorrow, already Saturday, right? So if Saturday the sadness kick in again, the uh, you're feeling down again, you're feeling sad again, you're feeling crying again, so you have to tell yourself, help yourself to tell yourself that, you know, no, that is not my grieving day. My grieving day is on Friday, on every Friday. So I should control and I should do my thing and delay my uh, grief of loss to next Friday. Next Friday is only my grief day that I can think about all this. As long as it's not Friday, I should leave my normal routine. Okay, this is actually a very good exercise. If you're in the situations, maybe you can try. Just set a grieving day, you see? And it will help you to delay your grief. Instead of every day, you set one day. Instead of Monday to, 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 to Sunday, you're crying, so you just set one day. That it, it will help you to navigate better, okay? Last but not least is do consider professional support. Okay, breakups are one of the tougher things we'll ever go through. But there is a way to get through it where you feel supported, guided, and you are not alone. Okay, in this unusual and difficult time, you may want to consider meeting a counsellor, even on a short-term basis, to provide you with a safe place to deconstruct what has happened and give you the gentle dose of reality and emotional support. Okay. If you find nobody to talk to and you are stuck, you don't know what to do, and it seems like nobody understands you, so we at SGU are ready to support and to help you and to journey together with you. Okay, so just need to text us. You can see our poster anywhere. Uh, uh, at the, uh, we, our office is at the TA building, so or you can just text us to make an appointment or come straight or just walk in. We are ready to help and to serve you. Okay, we will journey together. All right. So the final word. Okay, the only way out is through by Robert Frost. There is no other way. <laughs> the only way out is through. You go through all the stages. You see, you go through all your emotions like what we say just now, the stages of grief. What are the stages of grief? Is denial, anger, bargaining, depression, acceptance. You go through that. Okay, and then you go through the normal reactions, then you come to acceptance, and then you try to practice you know, all the do's that we're sharing just now, and it's just a matter of time, okay, to find a new, a new you, and someone who is deserved for your love in the future, okay? So that's all for tonight. Thank you for listening to me. Like what I say just now, if you need support, please do come to SGU and contact us. We are ready to help, yeah? Okay, there is another notice I want to share before I end my session is, please be informed that the Lighthouse Talk time will be changed to 10 a.m. effective from 1st February 2023. Usually, we have it on every Friday at 9 p.m., right? So, uh, effective from uh, 1st January, our light talk will change to uh, 10 a.m. in the morning. The same is on Friday. Same thing is recording. If you don't have time to uh, uh, on that at, at that time, do watch back uh, the recording, uh, which is in our Facebook. All right. So that's all for tonight. Thanks for your time with me. Keep it up. All right. You can do it, and we are ready to serve. Till I see you again. Bye. Ciao. Have a pleasant evening and have a good weekend. Good night.